If you block the little hole in a syringe and pull out the plunger, it will pop back in again, and that's called a vacuum spring. The plunger seems to be sucked back in again, but really it's being pushed in by the air pressure on the outside. In fact, the air pressure pushes in from all directions, trying to fill up the space we just made, but the only thing that can move is the end of the plunger, so that's what happens. The effort needed to pull out the plunger is just a little more than air pressure, which is around 14 pounds per square inch, depending on how high up a mountain you are. So, as you'd expect, the wider the plunger is, the more pressure you'll need to pull it out. So a big syringe is much harder to pull out than a small one. But, interestingly, it doesn't matter how long the syringe is. After you've overcome atmospheric pressure, you don't have to pull any harder, just keep pulling. Which you can sort of see here, remembering that this syringe already had a little air in it probably, so it's not a total vacuum. And it's a pretty dodgy set of scales, but perhaps you can see that it reaches its maximum very early on the draw and doesn't move any further after that. Hmm. All right then, a vacuum spring. So what can we do with it? Well, I drew up a little model car on my computer, which sounds quick and easy, doesn't it? But actually it took ages. But here it is anyway, being cut out on my laser cutting machine. The axles are bamboo kebab sticks and the panels are very thin plywood. The wheels need an extra hub disc on each side to give them support. And in the middle of the back axle is a little hook. I'm gluing all these parts together with wood glue. It didn't help that in the middle of my experiments my laser cutting machine broke down. It started making buzzing noises and stopped cutting. Luckily it was fixable when I figured out it was shorting within the casing. Anyway, I made this car to fit this small syringe. But first of all, it needs the end blocking off. and a loop of fishing line attached. After that it gets pushed together with the syringe held in place. The gearing is achieved in the simplest way I could, just very thin axles attached to very big wheels. The loop of line needs to go over the back axle hook, and now it's ready for action. No rubber bands, no metal springs, but you can still wind it up. This little car runs on ordinary, everyday atmospheric air pressure. How brilliant is that? It's a very light car, so it will skid on smooth surfaces, but I made the wheels spiky to help them grip on carpet and rugs. Whee! 
I'm putting these up on the website as a kit of parts in case you'd like one yourself. And why wouldn't you? Or maybe you know of a young person who'd like one for Christmas. I even made an extra set of back wheels for it so you can interchange them and learn more about gearing and other mechanical stuff. It's all so interesting. And I'm even including instructions. What more could you want? All right then, that's all very good and interesting, but is this a possible contender for a full-size wind-up car? Could we scale this up with huge tubes and make a car that could carry a person? I honestly don't know, but there are certainly some good things about vacuum springs. Theoretically, they would weigh much less than a metal spring of similar power, which is a huge advantage. Also, unlike most metal springs, they don't give you all the power in a rush and then fade away. The rate of energy release would be much more even, depending on the length of your tubes. And if something goes wrong, they don't explode dangerously like metal springs. Instead, they implode less dangerously, probably, <laughs> I suppose. In the meantime, see how far you can get one of these little cars to go and get back to me. Link in the description.